The Lost Book of King Og, Chapter 3 The Giants of the Hundred Thousand Giant War This is the telling of the Hundred Thousand Giant War, as transcribed by both Anak, the keeper of the bodies before Baal, and Anzal, the slayer of smaller selves before Baal of the Moon. These are the deeds of the giants who fought with King Og against Nimrod. For our days were passed in wrath, and our war is the tale that is told. King Og sent throughout the all throughout all the known world for uncircumcised Rephaim to fight Nimrod and his circumcised army. And the word went forth to every outpost of giants, and they came, the six-fingered, the mountain builders, the heavy weapon makers from the cold lands, the dragon siblings from the east, and the 20,000 giants that came with them. All in all, 100,000 giants, representing every colony, color, and creed in the known world. Then King Og anointed his seven braids and beard with oil. He stood before 100,000 of them all in the high place of Baal of the earth, and looking over his warriors and kingdom, he screamed with a loud voice that all Rephaim heard, For Baal of the earth and for the loss of the moon child, we go to war. And when the moon was full, the next uh, war broke out between Og's and Nimrod's kingdoms. Og and his giants fought against the circumcised, and the circumcised and Nimrod fought back. The Rephaim were driven on by the death of the moon child, and their hatred of circumcision hardened their resolve. These are the Rephaim of significant stature that fought with King Og on the field of battle of the Hundred Thousand Giant War. Anak, the keeper of the bodies before Baal, Anak, whose dark ones shrouded over him with unspeakable darkness, Anak, who spoke with the incantation to raise the dead, Anak, who worshipped Mott in secret, Anak, the transcriber of the first chapters of this very book. Anak, who cut himself and shaved the front of his head. Anak, who stood between Og and Nimrod, and was then cut down by the circumcised. Cut down by the circumcised. Anak, who wounded Nimrod's genitals a second time. Azath, the temple priest for Baal of the Moon. Azath, with blackened eyes, who rode a great beast into battle. Azath, the priest who was the creator of the driver and chaser. Azath, who weaved the bones of smaller selves into his beard. Azath, who ate the unnatural creeping things that did not have fins or scales, and the beasts that chewed the cud but did not have cloven hooves. Azath, whose dark ones moved objects around him. Azath, whose potions and spells protected the Rephaim on the field of battle. Azath's army was one thousand giants. Malcolm the cannibal, who had eaten the dead who were tied to the trees where the dark ones gathered. Malcolm, the treasurer in the house of Baal of the Moon, abominable Malcolm, who showed partiality, partiality and took the bribes that blind the eyes of the wise and twist the words of the honorable. Malcolm, who at times was possessed by dark ones that threw him into the water or the fire trying to kill him. Malcolm, who sang praises to Baal of the Moon as he was surrounded by circumcised Nephilim and run through. Malcolm's army was one thousand giants. Ag, who was Og's brother, and who died in the first moments of the battle. Ag, who had no connection or any interest in the connection to any spiritual things whatsoever. Ag, who followed not the custom of Og's land. Ag, who spared his firstborn from Baal's fire. Ag, who swung nets to, for fish and swung nets on the field for battle. Ag, who was stunned by stones and then pierced by spears and hacked with axes until he died. Ag's army was five thousand giants. Tarshan, who hunted in the great waters and tamed Leviathan. Tarshan, blood servant and warden of the blood pits of Baal of the earth. Tarshan, who killed the circumcised Nephilim on the field of battle by crushing skulls with hammers. Tarshan, who plundered Nimrod's stores and took all of his smaller selves and livestock. Tarshan, who face, whose face had been scarred by a mighty beast. Tarshan, who used the dark ones to read the minds and hearts of others. Tarshan's army was five hundred giants. Gurion the Heavy, whose fourth and final battle was the Hundred Thousand Giant War. Each war Gurion fought had torn his face so severely that he'd had three different faces. Gurion, who was oppressed by his Dark Ones and had been rendered mute. Gurion, who served Mott in the open. Gurion, who was stubborn, rebellious, a glutton, and a drunkard. Gurion, who continued to swing the driver and chaser mightily after his head had been severed in battle. Garion's army was 500 giants. Athos, the climber who climbed the mountains until the air thinned cold as he searched for, for new lands. Athos, soothsayer for Baal of the stars and celestial bodies. 
Athos, who had foretold the circumcision of Nimrod in the Hundred Thousand Giant War, Athos, who was strong and of good courage for Baal of the Stars and Celestial Bodies, and was one of who Baal of the Stars and Celestial Bodies possessed and never forsook, Athos, whose visage changed when the Dark Ones were upon him, Athos, who made armor out of the bones of the Nephilim and great beasts of the old, great beasts of old, Athos, who had the eyes of certain death, Athos' army was five hundred giants. Uval the Grey, father of Og's deceased wife, Lestha. Uval was the commander of elephants and great scaled beasts. Uval, who had fallen from the skies like lightning at the beginning. Uval, who conversed with the bright ones. Uval, whose heart broke when the moon child was lost. Uval, who sacrificed to gods we did not know. Uval, who died in combat after killing many while under the control of the Dark Ones. Uval's army was five thousand giants. Arkrut the Rephaim, who sharpened his fingernails. Arkrut, who connected to a floating beast for battle. Arkrut, who, when connected, became as a lion. Arkrut, whose floating beast tore at the groins of the circumcised Nephilim. Arkrut, who wore the skins and faces of the many Nephilim he'd killed. Arkrut, servant of Baal of the stars and celestial bodies. Arkrut, whose arrows were drunk with blood and whose sword longed to devour flesh. Arkrut, whose braided beard grew past his knees. Arkrut's army was five hundred giants. Noth the black Rephaim from the hot lands of elsewhere. Noth, like Yuval, conversed with the bright ones. Noth, who sacrificed to gods we did not know. Noth, who also spoke the incantation to raise the dead. Noth, who had opened his soul to the dark ones completely and whose eyes were darkened because of it. Noth, who heaped disasters upon the circumcised Nephilim and dashed their skulls upon the stones in the field. Noth, who had the eyes of certain death. Noth's army was one thousand giants. Yugthoth, the black Rephaim from the hot lands of elsewhere. Yugthoth, who was driven by the dark ones that visibly rested upon his shoulders. Yugthoth, who could call down fire from heaven from Baal of the sun. Yugthoth, who took off his sandals to question Baal of the sun and was not struck dead. Yugthoth, whose hair was thick and looked as ropes do. Yugthoth, who killed fifty circumcised Nephilim with the skull of a great beast before he died. Yugthoth, who had the eyes of certain death. His army was one thousand giants. Argu, the footbreaker, whose white hair shone under Baal of the sun. Argu, who fought mightily with the driver and chaser, and crippled many. Argu, who had to be chained to a stone pillar when under the power of the Dark Ones because of his terrible strength. Argu, who prophesied Og's victory in the Hundred Thousand Giant War. Argu, who left nothing undone. All that the Dark Ones commanded him. Argu's army was five hundred giants. Vetus, whose arms swung violently and who wrapped his fists in chains. Vetus, who fasted and prayed before Baal of the Moon with Og during the death watch of the Moon Child. Vetus, whose Dark Ones would enter his enemy and then return to tell him what the enemy was planning. Vetus, who'd eaten two hundred smaller selves in one sitting. Vetus, who took violent means to follow Baal of the Moon, brutally walking in all his ways. Vetus, who had the eyes of certain death. His army was five hundred giants. Briarios, the strong giant, who worked in the fields and harvested. Briarios, worshipper of Baal of the earth and a recipient of Baal's blessings. Briarios, who commanded many dark ones to enter the circumcised Nephilim armies and confuse their ways. Briarios, who dug a tunnel into Nimrod's kingdom, who built an incredible altar to Baal of the earth that was a witness between him and the dark ones, so that none in Og's kingdom could say, We have no part in Baal of the earth. Briarios' army was three thousand giants. Katos, the black Rephaim from the hot lands of elsewhere. Katos, who strikes pulverized boulders and who pounded his fists inside and through his enemies. Katos, the worshipper of gods we did not know. Katos, who had torn twenty circumcised Nephilim apart with his bare hands. Katos, a violent giant, whose fury none could reason with. Katos, who put a trumpet in the hand of every giant in his army, who said, When I blow the beast's horn, then you blow the trumpets on every side of the camp and scream. The battle belongs to Og, 
In doing so, the Nephilim were confused by the horn blast and yelling, and the Nephilim greatly feared Katos and his army, who had the eyes of certain death. Kato's army was two thousand giants. Gyges of curved limbs, Gyges who had been buried from the neck down to straighten his curved limbs at childhood, Gyges, builder of the high places and secret worshipper of Mott, Gyges who lived with the lepers, Gyges who was protected by dark ones that circled him in black flames, Gyges who conjured and sent a powerful dark one of ill will into the Nephilim camp, Gyges who had the eyes of certain death, he was captured and straightened till he died by the circumcised Nephilim. Gygus' army was two thousand giants. Tallow the simple giant. Tallow who ha who's had his head wounded as a child. Tallow whose forehead was as a wall, but whose skull was sunken. Tallow who opened himself completely to the dark ones and was rarely in control of himself. Tallow who spoke to all with the mind and voice of a dark one, and served Baal of the earth. Tallow, who allowed no razor come to near his head or face. His army was 425 giants. Raka, the empty head. Raka, whose dark ones completely controlled him. Raka was unpredictable with axe, driver, and chaser, and stones. Raka, who was killed on the field of battle by Nimrod's guard. Raka, whose eyes whitened as the eyes of the blind and spoke with the voice of a dark one. Raka, whose dark ones changed his form so he became a different giant. Raka, who had eyes of certain death. His army was 425 giants. Amok, who commanded the dark ones. Amok would say, Amok, who could say, go and wound that giant, and then the dark ones would go and wound him. Amok, who commanded the dark ones from the high places as Og stretched his arms over the field of battle. Amok who said, Baal of the earth has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices. Behold, to open yourself up to the dark ones is greater than sacrifice, better than the fat of lambs. For your witchcraft, iniquity, and idolatry please your God, Baal of the earth. Amok's army was 1,000 giants. They're, they're a little obsessed with, with things, aren't they? Virak the perfect, whose visage was beautiful and who received favor throughout the kingdom because of his pleasant appearance. Virak, servant of Baal of the sun. Virak, who raided Nimrod's castle and rushed on the spoil and took sheep, oxen, and cattle and slaughtered them on the ground and with his army ate them in stores, blood, bones, and all. Virak, who could call rocks and boulders to fall from the sky from Baal of the sun. Virak, whose flowing flaxen hair became the easy target of the Nephilim and he was severed in half after many wounds by a greater circumcised Nephilim. Virak, who had the eyes of certain death, his army was five hundred giants. Idigan the possessed. Idigan, whose dark ones would seize him and change his shape. Idigan, who spoke unintelligibly because of the dark ones in him. Idigan, whose seven braids had never been trimmed or cut. Idigan, servant of Mott. Idigan, who who when the battle became intense and he was severely wounded by the archers, asked his army to run him through with his sword, screaming, Let these circumcised giants come to torture and abuse me. Idigan's army was two thousand giants. Merahim, who had an extra arm growing from his chest that was useless. Merahim, who practiced the dark witchcraft of Baal of the earth that could change the species of any living beast. Merahim, who foretold the coming of the great waters. Mirahim, of the whom the Dark Ones moved around and through so much, so that he appeared as within a plague of locusts. Mirahim, who cut his hair at the end of every five years, because it was heavy and a burden upon him. Mirahim, who had the eyes of certain death, his army was two thousand giants. Upskis, whose skin and limbs were white as snow because he was a leper. Upskis, whose hair had turned white on his sores, and the sores were deeper in the skin of him. Upskis, who worshipped Mott in secret. Upskis, who with his fellow lepers beat the drums at the times of infant sacrifices to Baal of the earth. Upskis, who lived amongst the lepers near the trees where the dead are tied and the dark ones gather. Upskis, who had the eyes of certain death, his army was one thousand leprous and diseased giants. Skibar, the uniformed and stupid. Skibar, who spoke lies of the dark ones and bright ones. Skibar, who spent inordinate amounts of time grooming his beard. 
Skibar, who was beaten almost to death in the flatlands by his own Rephaim army. Skibar, who was spared from betrayal and death at the hands of his army by Anak, the keeper of the bodies before Baal. Skibar, the uniformed and stupid, who died delicately after one slap across the face from a circumcised Nephilim. Skibar, the confused, who lied with all of his breath, for there were many that hated him, and they hated him with cruel hatred. Skibar, whose corpse was circumcised on the field of battle by the Nephilim. Skibar's army, who wanted to kill him, was fifty giants. Oryax, who had stared at the sun for revelation from Baal until he was blinded. Oryax, with long black hair, who Baal of the sun spoke directly to. Blind Oryax, who was carried into battle and commanded his army from his chase. Oryax, who did call down fire from Baal of the sun upon the circumcised Nephilim on the field of battle. Oryax, who called upon Baal of the sun as his rock, fortress, and deliverer. Oryax, who spoke of Baal of the sun as his horn, stronghold, and refuge, who trains him to deliver violence. Oryax, who worshipped both Baal of the sun and Baal of the moon and opened himself to conflicted dark ones. Oryax, who had the eyes of certain death, his army was five hundred giants. Oya. Now this sounds like Oya and a few of these names sound like the ones that uh, uh, are in the book of Enoch. Oya, the black Rephaim from the hot lands of elsewhere. Oya, the bread maker and worshiper of gods we did not know. Oya, whose dark ones could transport his spirit into another living creature. Oya, who attacked the Nephilim on the field of battle with his transportation. Who raided the circumcised Nephilim temples and ate the fat of their sacrifices and drank the blood of their drink offerings. Oya, who was as dangerous and ferocious as he was strong. Oya, the fast, who had no use of weapons on the battlefield and used his hands to twist, thwart, and break the circumcised Nephilim. Oya, whose vengeance on the Nephilim was as grapes of gall, on bitter clusters served with wine that was a cruel poison. Oya, who had the eyes of certain death, his army was five hundred giants. Karans, the hairy blood drinker. Karans, who wounded his enemies and saved their blood in clay pots. Karans, worshipper of Baal of the earth. Karans, who swung a dead circumcised Nephilim as a club on the battlefield. Jeez. <laughs> Karans, who was told of his early death by the smaller self sorceresses. Karans, who then turned his forehead to the stone and sacrificed three hundred smaller selves to Baal of the earth and was granted a hundred more years of life. Karans, who said to the Nephilim, Why are you circumcised giants, fearful, O you of little faith in Baal of the earth? Karans, who then rose and rebuked the circumcised Nephilim, and the ground opened and swallowed many, and he kept his calm. Karans, who had the eyes of certain death, his army was five hundred giants. Encladius the wealthy, strong potion maker and servant of Baal of the moon. Encladius, whose dark ones of rage overtook him when he was drunk. Encladius, whose potions could chain a dark one in servitude to a Rephaim. Encladius, whose potions caused the drinker to see the future and tomorrow. Encladius, whose potions saved the Rephaim that ate the sour meat of the circumcised Nephilim as cooked by Stolus. Encladius, who, who when not drinking wine, ate sacrificial meat and hated his wise and understanding heart bitterly for no reason at all. Encladius, who was the heaviest Raphaim on the field of battle. Encladius, who drank a potion and prophesied the great waters. Encladius, who was a drunkard and a glutton and came to riches and his drowsiness clothed with him in gold. Encladius' army was two thousand giants. Typhus, boiler of meats and breads. Typhus, who with Stolus fed the armies of King Og. Typhus, who shaved his head after breaking a vow to Baal of the moon. Typhus, of which no one in all of kings of Og's kingdom practiced wickedness like him. Typhus, who never abstained from meat offered to Baal of the earth, moon, or sun. Typhus, who drank the blood and essence of things strangled and from things of spiritual connection from which you keep with yourselves. Typhus, who ate the sacrificial bread, and he ate the dainty sacrificial meat served to him with the evil eye. Typhus, who said, Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats, but I shall destroy both it and them. Typhus, whose wickedness caused the dark ones to attach to him, so that he always smoldered as the embers of fire. Typhus, who had the eyes of certain death, his army <clears throat> was five hundred giants. Stolus the Stewmaker who spoke with the bright ones, Stolus, whose eyes were blackened by all that was vulgar in the world, 
Stullus, who with Typhus fed the armies of King Og. Stullus, who went on the bat field of battle, gave himself over to the Dark Ones. Stullus, who fed upon the dead Nephilim and cooked their sour bodies for Og's army. Stullus, who would only sacrifice an uncircumcised male, smaller self, without blemish to Baal of the earth. Stullus, who could call large fecal worms up from the ground to wrap, enter, and consume his enemies from Baal of the earth. Stullus, who had eaten the food served by the Bright Ones, having eaten their strange meat as a guest till his hand pushed the plate away, his army was two thousand giants. Madoc of the Shadows Madoc, who stayed away from his fellow Rephaim and lived in caves. Madoc, who heard the distant cursed voices and obeyed their commands. Madoc, who was surrounded in a cloud of dark ones that covered him in the haze of Baal of the Earth which filled his cave. Madoc, whose prophecies were shunned, because they were never of good, but always of darkness. Madoc, who covered himself in mud, and his hair was heavy with soil. Madoc, whose dark ones put a filth upon all they touched, and made them vile, and set them as a gazing stock. Madoc, who had eyes of certain death, his army was five hundred giants. Ipos, the tormented, inheritor of Baal's kingdom. Ipos, whose golden flesh was pronounced with great musculature. Ipos, whose beauty could summon the loins of great giants who weren't homosexual. Ipos, whose dark ones would lift him and place him where he requested. Ipos, whose flesh had touched any and all unclean, unclean things to inherit the kingdom of Baal. Ipos, who conjured a lying dark one to confuse the ranks of the Nephilim. Ipos, who did indeed fornicate and was a lover of males. Ipos, who surrounded himself with male giants who loved him. Ipos, whose behavior reminded the Rephaim of the unspoken mistake, so that he was disliked for it. Ipos, who was a fornicator, a mot idolater, effeminate, a thief, covetous, a drunkard, a reviler, a swindler, and was prophesied to inherit the kingdom of Baal. Sorry. Ipos, who alone had the respect of King Og. Ipos, who had the eyes of certain death, his army was five hundred giants. Balor with black hair and one good eye. Balor, whose single eye perceived the weaknesses of his enemies. In battle, Balor was unstoppable. Balor, whose good eye was a blessing of Baal of the moon. <clears throat> Balor, whose only, who only spoke in dark sayings. Balor, whose incantation to Baal of the earth could move a mountain to the sea. Balor, who also said, If I am indeed a servant of Baal of the sun, then let fire come down from on high and consume the Nephilim. And fire did come down, and it did consume the fifty Nephilim. Balor, who prophesied of the coming of the great waters. Balor, whose single eye had no pity upon the Nephilim, for Nimrod's kingdom was Og's. Balor's army was two thousand giants. Uh, Hanris, the hairy priest of Mot. Hanris, who did not worship Mot in secret. Hanris, who walked with Mot as a companion and visited his kingdom. Hanris, whose dark ones were such that he was a whirlwind. He was as a whirlwind looks and as a whirlwind turns. Hanris, who swore thoughtlessly with his lips to only do evil. Hanris, who Mott told of the great waters. Hanris, whose method of destruction on the field of battle brought a fear to the uncircumcised. Hanris, who had the eyes of certain death. Hanris, whose comprehension of the dark ones was complete. His army was two thousand giants. Batis, father of Balor. Batis, whose wisdom was afforded by Baal of the moon. Batis, who spoke of the nature of things and saw all unseen truth. Batis, whose heavy beard rested over his shoulders. Batis, who created a strange fire that lifted upwards uh, towards Baal of the sun regularly. Batis, who pronounced a curse upon the circumcised Nephilim in the name of Baal of the earth, and for forty-two untamable female bears entered the field of battle and mauled the Nephilim till they died. Batis, who was beheaded and cannibalized on the field of battle, his army was five thousand giants. Yathet, keeper of the smaller selves. Yathet, whose charge it was to determine the smaller selves to be slaughtered by Anzal. Yathet, of dark eyes and dark hair. Yathet, who lifted his eyes to heaven and saw the sun, moon, and stars and all the hosts of heaven, and he worshipped and served Baal and all those things. Yathet, who was close to his brother Anak. Yathet, who taught the Rephaim how to make war with the driver and chaser, and how to bend a bow of bronze. Yathet, who had the eyes of certain death. Yathet, who growled as he killed. His army was two thousand giants. Uh, Movek, who hated his fellow giants like a sickness. 
Malvik who prophesied of the unspoken mistake. Malvik who, <clears throat> Malvik who hated the giants because they should have confirmed the prophecy that would end their species. Malvik who knew the giants' time was short. Malvik who prophesied the coming of the great waters. Malvik, who was consumed by jealous dark ones that caused him to scar himself continually. Malvik, who worshipped Mott openly and was a brother to Bodice. Malvik, who summoned unspeakable beasts of Mott upon the field of battle that killed many circumcised and uncircumcised alike. Malvik, who attacked the Nephilim mightily until his hand was weary and would not loosen the sword. Malvik, who died as a hero of old on the, battle, on the field of battle. His army was 500 giants. Jotun from the cold lands of elsewhere. Jotun, whose flowing yellow hair and piercing eyes brought fear to all those who looked upon him. Jotun, who wore the pelts of unknown beasts. Jotun, who sacrificed daily to, the ba to Baal of the sun, who was able to arouse the anger of Baal of the sun and call down large stones of fire against his enemies. Jotun, who drank a potion of Uncladius and lost himself to the Dark Ones for eight seasons. Jotun, who helped to tear down Nimrod's high places of Baal worship. Jotun, who killed Nimrod's sons, whose names will not be mentioned, to blot them from the earth. Jotun's army was 500 giants. Gantua, from the cold the, uh, lands of elsewhere. Gantua, who wrestled mightily with the great beasts in the blood pits of Baal of the earth. Gantua, who called down fire from Baal of the sun and did not receive it. Gantua, who worshipped Baal in a wrong fashion and was promised every abomination before death. Gantua, while strong of flesh, was weak of spirit and mind. Gantua, of whom the dark ones avoided. Gantua, who was caught, his eyes gouged, chained to a stone, and lashed and abused by the Nephilim until he was dead. Gantua's army was five hundred giants. Nibos, the black giant from the hot lands of elsewhere. Nibos, who escaped capture from Nimrod's army. Nimr uh, Nibos, who preferred a sword to an axe. Nibos, who collected 3,000 removed Nephilim heads from the field and burned them in high places to gods that we did not know, according to the rituals of the nation from which he'd come. Nibos, whose dark ones stood beside him as trees walking. Nibos, who shaped the shores of the great land with stones and sand. Nibos, whose foreign gods told of the great waters to come. Nibbo's army was 1,000 giants. Sal, the black, long-haired giant from the hot lands of elsewhere. Sal, brother of Nibbos. Sal, possessed by a powerful dark one who would change his form into an abomination for days upon end. Sal, whose madness was corrupted on the field of battle. Sal, whose warfare made no discernible sense. Sal, whose heavy dark hair was magnificent to all who saw it. Sal, who held fast to gods we did not know and would not depart from them. Sal, who dragged the dead bodies to Stolus for food. Sal, who had the eyes of certain death. Sal, who died at the hands and weapons of the circumcised. His army was 1,000 giants. Uh, Isdabar, of golden skin and black eyes. Isdabar, who'd sacrificed all of his offspring to Baal of the sun before the unspoken mistake. Isdabar, who practiced all of the soothsaying witchcraft and openness to dark ones that he could muster. Isdabar, who had created potions with Oncladius that caused the giants to see the future and tomorrow. Isdabar, of whom where the, there had been no giant like him before, and who worshipped Baal of the sun with all of his soul and with all of his might, according to the laws of the kingdom. Isdabar, who was foretold of the great waters to come. Isdabar, who had eyes of certain death. His army was five hundred giants. Danava, of golden skin and black eyes. Danava, whose dark ones protected him from arrows and spears. Danava, whose madness caused him to run headlong into battle. Danava, who attacked the circumcised Nephilim with fingers and teeth. Danava, who consulted a medium of Mott for guidance. Danava, whose staff was infused by the power of Baal of the Sun, so that all who touched it were healed from various wounds. Danava, who walked with Baal of the Sun as no other giant before or after. His army was five hundred giants. Cressel of the warmer lands of elsewhere. Cressel of golden skin and hair. Cressel whose army the dark ones made invisible. Cressel, the servant of Baal of the moon. Cressel whose eyes the dark ones confused the circumcised Nephilim. So that they said, I hear them, but I see no one. Cressel whose army relentlessly killed and tormented the most Nephilim in the hundred thousand giant war. 
Cressel, who practiced the darkest sorcery of Baal of the Moon within the great land. Cressel, who had prophesied the great waters. His army was two thousand giants. Tiamat, of the lands along the waters. Tiamat, whose body was covered with the scars from struggles with water creatures. Tiamat, whose presence brought fear into the hearts of the giants who had seen him in battle before. Tiamat, who screamed to his army that Baal of the Moon was great and greatly to be feared above all other gods. Tiamat, whose army argued about the stature of Baal of the Moon, he called down ice from the sky upon one hundred of his own giants. Tiamat's army was five hundred giants. Zokul, the prophet of Mot. Zokul, who never left Mot's temple until the time of the hundred thousand giant war. Zokul, of whom Mot spoke wisdom through. Zokul, who prophesied the victory of the hundred thousand giant war and coming great waters. Zokul, possessed by dark ones that stood on his shoulders. Zoku, Zoku, who was aroused on the field of battle, he so hated the Nephilim and lusted for their death. Zoku, who drank the blood of the Nephilim he killed. Upon the battlefield, upon the field of battle, Zoku was possessed by a demon that no one had encountered before. Zoku, who had the eyes of certain death in a possessed state, attacked his own army and he was murdered by them. Zoku's army was two thousand giants. Wow. Atlan, one of the two tallest giants from the furthest edge of the land. Atlan, who hounded his circumcised enemies day and night with fury. Atlan, who never feared and put his trust in Baal of the stars and celestial bodies. Atlan, who saw the Nephilim turn back in fear of his approach. Atlas, who swung his driver and chaser, exposing the yellowish entrails, blood and bone of the circumcised Nephilim. Atlan, who twisted the circumcised Nephilim's spells and curses against them with great cunning. Atlan, whose army marked the footsteps and lay in wait for the circumcised Nephilim, who would collect the foreskins of the dead Rephaim on the fields of battle. Atlan's army was three thousand giants. Theoten, one of the two tallest giants from the furthest edge of the land. Theoten, whose red hair hung about his head as a testimony of his strength. Theoten, who hated the circumcised Nephilim with an unnatural burning hatred. Theoten, whose army alone tore through the Nephilim as lions tear through the sick. Theoten, whose giants set fire with oils, or set fires with oil on the fields of battle and attacked outside it. Missing text. Theoten, who worshipped Baal of the stars and celestial bodies. Theoten, who broke the circumcised Nephilim teeth in their mouths with rocks and other objects. Theoten, whose dark ones drove him to pursue the Nephilim for days without rest. His army was three thousand giants. Zakab, a hurler of, of stones and spears. It was said that Zakab could throw rocks and spears and his mighty arms that were as large as felled tree stumps never tired. Zakab, who lived near the trees where the Rephaim tied their dead. Zakab, who had a dark one so powerful that he could not be bound with chains, but that they broke as a thread of tow when he touches it when it touches the fire. Zakab, who sacrificed a bale of the moon at dusk every evening. Zakab's hate for the circumcised Nephilim was the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Zakab, who had the eyes of certain death. Zakab led an army of 1,000 giants who hurled stones and spears in battle. Balas, the finisher, who slew all of the dying and wounded Nephilim on the battlefield. Baalus, who stacked the bodies of the dead Nephilim in large burning monuments to Baal of the earth. Baalus, who it was said the Dark Ones favored. Baalus, the soothsayer, who secretly worshipped Mott. Baalus, who would force wounded Nephilim faces to swim together before they broke like pottery in his grasp. Baalus, who lowered himself to the ground and attacked the circumcised as a beast of, of the fields would. Baalus, the finisher's army was 2,000 giants who slew the wounded Nephilim on the field of battle. Skiron, who lost his arm in battle alongside Geryon. Skiron's servant of Baal of the Moon. Uh, it might be Skyron. I think it's Skiron. Skiron, who connected to a floating beast into battle. Skiron, who, when connected, looked like an elephant and grew his arm back. Skiron, who harvested and drank the blood of the Nephilim in clay pots with Karans. Skiron, who demanded that those follow him shave their heads in ritualistic pattern as those from the hot lands of elsewhere do. Skiron, who trained the great beasts to stand upon the circumcised and hold them still until his army cut their throats and stomped their skulls. 
Before the water came, the field of battle was soaked with blood, and it was Skiron and his giants doing. Skiron's army was five hundred giants. Gug, the ugliest giant, to walk before Baal of the earth. Gug, whose ugliness could stun a bull elephant beast of the field. Gug, who, while in a trance, spoke the words of Baal of the stars and celestial bodies. Gug, who prophesied of the great waters to come. Gug, who with his horrible visage led the first of the Rephaim to battle. Gug, who wrung Nephilim necks with hands that were dangerous weapons. Gug, whose terrible physical twisting was never undone. When Baal of the earth looked upon Gug, he looked with respect. Gug, who had the eyes of certain death, his army was five hundred giants. Hastor, Og's battle strategist. Hastor, who rode a large beast of old to the, battle, to the field of battle. Hastor, whose heavy black hair was a crown to him. Hastor, who was a priest for Baal of the moon. Hastor, who was honorable and whose counsel was like deep waters. Who forced his sandaled foot upon the necks of many of the failed circumcised. Hastor's army was successful because the circumcised Nephilim nation is a nation without counsel and there is no understanding among them. Hastor, who had prophesied the loss of the unspoken mistake and the great waters. Hastor's army was five hundred giants. The dragon siblings with white hair and blue eyes entered the hundred thousand giant war from the east. The dragon siblings that told of a wealthy city in the sky. The dragon siblings who worshipped gods we did not know. The dragon siblings who were protected by the bright ones. The dragon siblings who, whose joining army added 20,000 Rephaim to the battle. The kingdom of Og hired the dragon siblings with the gold stripped from Baal of the earth's temple. A curse forevermore is upon us all for our purchase. Their tales and exploits against the circumcised, are they not recorded in the wars of the giants in the mountains? Tarhunt the hungry, who ate many sour dead on the field of battle, and who was spared from sickness by a potion from Ancladius. Tarhunt, who killed as many uncircumcised Nephilim as Ballas the finisher. Tarhunt, the scarred and hungry, who attacked teeth first and killed with the driver and chaser. Tarhunt, worshipper of Baal of the moon. Tarhunt, who waited upon the dark ones and was of good courage and was strengthened by Baal of the moon. Tarhunt, who was surrounded by the voices of the dark ones that had advised him. Tarhunt, who prophesied the great waters, who had the eyes of certain death, Tarhunt's army was one thousand giants. Meyer, who connected to a floating beast in battle. Meyer, who when connected looked like a rhinoceros. Meyer, who worshipped Baal of the earth. Meyer, who lifted a hillside and killed three hundred circumcised Nephilim with it. Meyer, who was a lawless Rephaim, whose dark ones hung about him like reeds by still waters. Meyer, who sang, A whip for the beast, a bridle for the Nephilim, and a rod for Nimrod's back. Meyer, who, Meyer, whose commitment to Baal of the earth was complete. Meyer, who ha, who has, whose eyes had been blackened and scorched in his quest for certain death. Meyer's army was five hundred giants. Haya, who scattered the pieces of the circumcised Nephilim on the battlefield. Haya, who welcomed the dark ones of Mott within him. Haya, of brutal, of brutal stature, who gave his dying enemies vinegar to drink. Haya, who carried the dead Rephaim from the field of battle to tie to the trees where the dark ones gather. Haya, whose dark ones tormented and circumcised Nephilim so that they threw themselves down and dashed their stomachs and skulls open on the sharp rocks of the field of battle. Hayas, who, whose contention with the circumcised Nephilim was as the bars of a castle. Hayas' army was one thousand giants. Arg, the red-haired, who's lost an eye once in battle. Arg, who took an eye of every circumcised Nephilim he killed. Arg, who hated Nimrod with all of his soul and was responsible for Nimrod's original circumcision. Arg, who was so consumed by Baal of the stars and celestial bodies that the dark ones gathered about him as a storm in the sand. Arg, whose dark ones spoke through him and guided the Rephaim in battle. Arg, who had the eye of certain death. His army was one thousand giants. I take it the dark ones are the watchers or something. Cacus, the dark Rephaim from the hot lands of elsewhere. Cacus, worshipper of gods we did not know. Cacus, whose hair was as ropes and whose back was broad. Cacus, whose dark ones broke the bones of the circumcised Nephilim when told. Cacus, who wore high-ranking circumcised Nephilim army heads about his waist. 
Cacus, who was scarred by a bale of the moon as he pronounced a broken incantation to raise the moon child from the dead. Cacus' army was 1,000 giants. Crockle with crooked teeth. Crockle, who along with Zacob, soaked 1,000 cedar trees in oil, set them on fire and threw them into the kingdom of circumcised Nephilim. Crockle, who shaved his head but let his beard grow. Crockle, who called upon Baal of the earth to poison the rivers in the land of the circumcised Nephilim. Crockle, who was born half consumed by darkness so that he never did one good thing. Crockle, whose dark ones engulfed him as the fire licks about a sacrifice. Crockle, who studied the ways of darkness until it was all that he was. His army was five hundred giants. Corb the Drunk Corb, keeper of the vineyards, who connected to a floating beast into battle. Corb, who when connected, was a bear. Corb, the drunken carver of idols and accursed objects of Mott. Corb, whose carvings were imbued with the blessings of Mott and his dark ones. Corb, whose mighty strength dug this uncircumcised valleys of Og's kingdom. Corb, who had given his flesh to the dark ones of Mott at an early age. Given his flesh to the dark ones of Mott at an early age, and whose eyes were darkened. Corb, who said the following, Let the giants serve Mott, and the nations bow down to him. Let Mott be the ruler of thy brethren. Let your brothers and fathers bow to him. Cursed be anyone who curses Mott. There will be no blessings for you. Corb's army was five hundred giants. Lathet, the Rephaim, keeper of weapons. Lathet, who taught the Rephaim how to kill with the driver and chaser. Lathet, who secretly worshipped Mott. Lathet, who, was as, <clears throat> who as he bled a circumcised Nephilim scream. This is the blood of the circumcised covenant which is shed for the uncircumcised giants. Do this in remembrance of Mott. Lathet, with red hair, who ran mad in the forest under the power of many dark ones. Lathet, who mixed animals and creatures into new beasts with the power of Baal of the earth. Lathet, who placed rods in the sight of the animals in the gutters so that they would mate strangely by the rods. Lathet, who would not breed the animals that were feeble, for the feeble were for eating, but for the strong they were for warfare. Lathet, whose unnatural beasts were both a blessing and a curse from Baal of the earth. Lathet's army was five hundred giants. Yepsu, the bastard son of Baal of the earth, with no discernible parentage. Yepsu, who ate the yellowing entrails of all he killed. Yepsu of old, who conversed regularly with the bright ones. Yepsu, whose dark ones made him as barrel with the, uh, as a barrel with his face the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words as the voice of multitudes of spirits. Yepsu, who knew the incantation to raise the dead. Yepsu's army was three thousand giants. Sandar, the dark Rephaim from the hot lands of elsewhere. Sandar, who shaved his head bald before Baal of the earth. Sandar, who threw rocks and missiles over the field of battle with Zacob and Krakul. Sandar, who, who, who set seven dark ones by themselves, within him that spoke through him in turn. Sandar, who defeated his army from its enemies, saying, who defended his army from his enemies, saying, I will defend this army to save it, for Baal of the earth's sake, and for the uncircumcised in the kingdom of Og's sake. Sandar, who delivered his army from the circumcised with unspoken fury. His army was five hundred giants. Zaphon, high priest of Baal of the sun. Zaphon, whose dark ones appeared as three dark giants flanking him. Zaphon, who was captured by the circumcised Nephilim, dragged into Nimrod's kingdom and thrown into a furnace. Zaphon, who cried out before the flames, Shall I be cursed to die of flames as a high priest of Baal of the sun? Perhaps Baal of the sun has not redeemed us from the curse invoked, because we hang our, our dead on trees where the dark ones gather after all. Nimrod then ordered the furnace to be heated seven times more than it usually was heated. Fifteen of Nimrod's guards died from the heat as they pushed Zaphon into the furnace. And Nimrod said, Did I not put one Rephaim in the furnace? Nimrod's guard that remained replied, He was but one uncircumcised Rephaim. Nimrod replied, Look, I see four giants walking about the loose, about loose in the fire, and one of them looks like Baal of the moon. Then Nimrod came near the mouth of the fiery furnace and spoke and said, Zaphon, you servant of Baal of the moon, come on out here. When Zaphon excited the furnace, not a hair on his head was singed, 
nor was his armor or weapons hot, nor had the smell of fire come upon him. Zaphon then said, I am a servant of Baal of the sun, but rightly you speak, because Baal of the moon, Baal of the earth, Baal of the stars and celestial bodies, and Baal of the sun were in your furnace. Zaphon was then beheaded by Nimrod. <laughs> Zaphon's army was five hundred giants. Ornias the Willfully Dark Ornias, whose countenance was like lightning and whose raiment was white as snow. Ornias, who prayed unto the eternal, immortal, invisible, and only veil of the moon. Ornias, who captured the circumcised Nephilim, not to kill them, but that should be tormented as a hand when a scorpion strikes it. Ornias, whose dark ones protected his body and healed his wounds. Ornias, whose dark ones hated him and whispered against him to devise his harm. Ornias, whose anger lasted for a lifetime, who had no favor for life, who wept until morning and whose joy never came. Ornias, who remained close to Og in battle. Ornias, who had the blackened eyes of certain death. That is the end of chapter 3.